Greetings to everyone. Uh, then, uh, mm, please listen to the further um, teachings with the proper Mahayana intention, Mahayana intent, which is to uh, achieve enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. <clears throat> So, um, so far, um, we have been going through the, uh, the teachings of, uh, Master Gambopa. Um, the, so it is known as the, um, the precious, a precious garland of the Supreme Path. Uh, so similar to a garland or a, a rosary um, chanting beat which has a number of beats and all the beats when formed together uh, they make uh, they make one big garland so when all the beats were formed together it makes one big garland similarly when all the uh, instructions that was laid in this book were put together uh, put it the writer from um, the perfect guidance to uh, liberation from samsara and uh, so therefore um, there are 280 um, beats or 280 different kinds of uh, advices or instructions in this book uh, and so far we have covered um, uh, 17 of them 18, 18 of them. So far we have covered uh, 18 of them and now we will continue with the rest. <clears throat> so before we begin, I would like to uh, tell you that if you have any questions, uh, then you can take that, you, you can keep a note of that and uh, you can ask them directly or just send a message uh, to the just send a message uh, there and then i will keep from the uh, i will read from the questions and then i'll try to respond oh yeah so so far now we have been going through with the uh, 10 necessary things and of that uh, eight of them were completed and now we will go with the last two the ninth and the tenth and uh, the ninth is to deal with uh, so for a practitioner especially a mahayana practitioner it is important to um it's it, it is important for one to be uh one's mind to be directed towards uh, the one's mind should be directed towards the sentient beings uh, with compassion the compa uh, dr driven by compassion one's heart one's mind should be directed to towards um, sentient beings mother sentient beings um if you have that if you have the if you are always directing your mind or your heart towards mother sentient beings um then whatever um, activities you take 
this will not go not become selfish it, this will not become uh, narrow-minded in um in fact it will become a very uh, it will become a great practice it will become uh, the uh, when you direct your mind towards other sentient beings then um, the actions you take will become will no longer will, will no longer be uh, narrow and this will be uh, of great value so therefore one should direct one's mind towards the benefit of other sentient beings uh, with compassion that is the ninth lesson instruction um, so the the next one uh, the tenth lesson is known as share of the code we should have done with a similar measure was she goes that so that means with your understanding of emptiness and uh, by um, uh, cultivation cultivation of wisdom and understanding of emptiness uh, one should be able to uh, withhold one's mind um, from being uh, led astray with uh, uh, the um, the grasping of things having an inherent existence or or, or things having a uh, things having a true reality so when we say true reality here we're actually talking about things having an existence things having things existing in a nature that is um, no longer um, dependent or rel uh, relative to the mind that it uh, is being labeled by um, a, 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 a phenomena a thing existing all on its own um, without having to depend on the either the uh, ideas that um, it was conceived by or the mind that it uh, observes so a thing free from any observer a thing a phenomena that is uh, no longer relevant or uh, relative to the observer uh, such a phenomena would be known as an inherent inherently existing phenomena and uh, therefore that would be also called a true reality and such true reality is does not does no longer exist uh, i mean is such true reality does not exist and uh, so grasping your mind towards uh, such a reality is a delusion and therefore one should uh, remove this through understanding by studying of course uh, through understanding uh, the buddha's teaching and then uh, by also by um, cultivating um, developing wisdom and through that one can remove the grasping uh, onto things um, of true reality <clears throat> okay uh, so now the next is known as the ten dependable things so the ten uh, the ten things one should be dependent upon uh, ten de dependable instructions uh, so of, so the first one is known as uh, one should rely or one should depend upon or maybe reliance is the right word uh, ten, ten, ten reliant things uh, so ten things one should rely upon so the first of them is that one should rely upon a teacher that has experiential uh, realization and uh, also has uh, compassion as well so it is very important that uh, when you look for a teacher the teacher uh, i think we covered that a uh, long time ago but since it's important we will uh, repeat it here again uh, so it's a, <clears throat> a teacher uh, usually a teacher needs uh, uh, a 
teacher has to have um, three. So there are a number of qualities for uh, uh, what to, to define a teacher. And, uh, and um, of that, we will uh, pick two uh, most important things that uh, one should look for in a teacher. And that, uh, that would be uh, the experiential knowledge. One is the experiential knowledge and the other is compassion. So if there is in, uh, the, the root word of a, a teacher in Sanskrit is guru, which means heavy. Um, so the teacher should be heavier than you in the, should have a heavier uh, experience. The teacher sh should have a heavier spiritual experience than yourself. That is important. And uh, also, meaning the teacher should be more knowledgeable. I mean, the teacher should have more spiritual experience in order to have more spiritual experience, you need to have more spiritual knowledge. So therefore, uh, spiritual knowledge uh, and uh, spiritual experience uh, it should be the most important thing for a teacher. Uh, that is what you should be looking for. And uh, in addition to that, in addition to having a spiritual uh, knowledge and a spiritual experience, the teacher should also be kind and compassionate because no matter how knowledgeable and how uh, highly realized the master is, if the master is not uh, not really that compassionate, then the master will not help you uh, go, help, help you go through with your problems. So therefore, it is important for the master to be knowledgeable and the master to have experience, and then also uh, compassion uh, for other people. So that the master will take care of the uh, take care of your um, suffering problems and uh, misery and so on and so forth. Oh yeah. Um, so the second one is known as uh, depending or relying upon uh, isolated place such as a monastery uh, or a re retreat place. So any form any any kind of uh, isolated place is. Uh, okay, so this is in reference uh, to uh, someone um, in in the in the in the begin in, in the beginning of the path. So when you are starting with your practices, then it's important that you have you are living in isolation and you have less just action as uh, the better uh, uh, the lesser the distraction the better. as you progress with your practices then the distraction no longer uh, disturbs your practices uh, because you have control you can control your mind but when we first begin it is important to as, as we can so therefore, uh, isolation, depending or relying upon an isolated place is very important. Uh, the text, it says one should take shelter in a monastery, which is isolated from the society, spiritually pleasant, blissful and established with the divine blessing. Um, so even though it says monastery, um, so the transition may have a little bit, uh, uh, maybe a little bit faltered in the sense that uh, in Tibetan we use the word gomba uh, for monasteries a lot. It has been popularized as the uh, term for monastery, and now every uh, every time we say gomba, uh, people understand it to be the monastery gomba gomba. Uh, but the true meaning, the the initial meaning of Gomba, it means to uh, to be isolated or to be distanced from the town uh, with uh, over over three kilometers. So a place that is uh, distanced from the town, which is full of hustle bustle, uh, for more than three kilometers is a is, is a, the place is known as uh, Gomba. Um, and uh, because the when a, when a when a monastery 
is usually a monastery should be set up in with the traditionally a monastery is set up with a, a distance of three kilometers from the town uh, so therefore monasteries are also known as gomba but but now i think for over five six centuries uh, people know people when when we say gomba in tibetan people always think uh, of a monastery uh, so anyway um, the text it says one should uh, rely upon a divine um, um one should rely upon an isolated place such as a gomba so in that sense you might say even if you if you live in the monastery if the monastery is usually even th even though the monastery may not may or may not be situated dis uh, distantly from the town it is still um it is it is in the town but it is kind of um, um isolated within itself so uh, not uh, uh mixed or end up with the uh, with the hustle bustle of the town so in in that sense a monastery is a safe uh, place to start your practices so therefore one may enter a monastery uh, either as a monk or nun or uh, as a lay person and uh, serve the monastery and do your practices so that is also uh, um, that is that is that is also doable so in other words, uh, the second instruction says that one should rely upon a uh, place, isolated place, meaning uh, one should rely upon a place that is free from distraction. So free from distraction is very important for a, a Dharma, Dharma practitioner, especially a beginner Dharma practitioner. So the third one is now, uh, that means, uh, the third instruction the th third instruction is that one should rely upon so you, you may have a number of friends but for spiritual practices in order to develop in order to improve your spiritual practices one should rely upon a teacher that has similar views as you regarding spirituality and uh, if you have a so one should understand that this is in regards to a beginner level sort of dharma practitioner or if you are uh, <clears throat> um, because uh, when you start your Dharma practices and you have uh, 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 differing views, uh, then that person can influence your views from here to there and there to here because you are not totally grounded yourself. So therefore, mm, it is important when you first begin with uh, with, with with your practices, uh, then you should find uh, you should rely upon a friend that is firmly grounded in his or her uh, spiritual practices themselves. And uh, if you have that, if you have that, that person who is firmly grounded in their practices will be able to uh, influence you. Uh, will be able to influence and. Uh, um uh help you with the practices that you are going uh, you, you are doing and uh, make you grow spiritually um if the person holds a differing view then that person will not be able to help you as much uh for example if you have a very good uh let's say a hindu friend uh, and uh, he's a very good, very good practitioner in the Hindu, in Hindu Dharma. Then, uh, even though he's such a great practitioner in the faith that he believes in, um, but the person might influence you with uh, their practices, and then you might have a number of questions regarding the practices that you are doing. So uh, it is also important to understand that uh, we are not saying one should not, you know. So, so the same goes with different tradition, different lineages, and so on and so forth. So we are not saying that one should not learn from other people, but it is that. Uh, so before you start your practices, of course, it's important to uh, find out a lot more information about which path to follow, 
uh, and which tradition to follow and so on and so forth. But once you, um, once you find um, substantial uh, qualities and substantial um, importance in following a certain a tradition, then it uh, it's better to stick with that tradition, especially uh, during the initial stages of initial stages of your practices. Because from the very beginning, if you keep uh, mixing around, then you will not be able to develop uh, much. You will not be able to improve much. Uh, but as your practices grow, then you can also take more and more and more. But in the very beginning, it's more important to stick with one sort of um, to stick with the tradition or the uh, uh, or the culture or the faith that you have uh, started with. And um, so if <clears throat> so, so th this is what it is talking about. So it is important to rely upon a friend that has a similar uh, uh, views and similar attitude and similar uh, the uh, intention and uh, similar understanding as you do regarding uh, spiritual practices so that one can help each other. Hmm. Oh. So the third instruction is that one should re recall the uh, flaws or the, <clears throat> the faults uh, of one's livelihood and then should, uh, uh, should minimize the way one, uh, one leads, should minimize the way one leads their lives. Uh, so whether it be the food that they take, or whether it is the whether it's the food that you take, whether whether it is the uh, material uh, objects that you keep, and so on and so forth. So it should be limited. It should be um, the means should be limited to the utmost necessity. Um, so in what it means is that uh, the more um, the, the more material things you acquire, usually the reason we have more and more, which usually the reason the, the, the reason we acquire more and more material is, uh, material is because we want to satisfy our uh, need. Uh, we call it need, but it may be our greed. Uh, so in order to satisfy a certain need that is within our mind, we try to get more things and more things and more things. But no matter how many um, uh, uh, new things we get, uh, we never get satisfied because uh, we lose interest in the new thing that we bought yesterday and now we want something else tomorrow and uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so our greed, so that is not necessarily the need, it is more, uh, more likely the greed because greed can never be satisfied. Uh, if it is a need, then it can be satisfied, but uh, greed can never be satisfied. So, uh, because um, the more we have, the more we want. And uh, so therefore material needs, material things can never satisfy us. So therefore it is important that we rely, uh, we try, we, we, we teach ourselves, we train ourselves to, we train ourselves to live uh, with minimal materials as much as we can. And uh, by doing so, we will have the less material, the, ma the less material things we have, the less things we have uh, to be attached with. And uh, the less attachment we have, uh, less distraction there will be. And the less distraction there is, the more focused we will be on our our practices. So therefore, it is important to uh, limit our material uh, needs. Oh yeah. Uh, now next is known as uh, relying upon an instruction that has been passed down to uh, realized masters, uh, through sages or through realized masters. Uh, <clears throat> that is the sixth instruction. One should, oh, sorry, the fifth instruction. 
one should take shelter in the lineage instructions of the Siddhas by giving up the partial outlook. So, as I said earlier, it is important to look for uh, qualities in your teacher and then also, um, so the teacher and the teaching are kind of uh, relative. So in order to find a good teacher, you need to know that what, the te what that person is teaching is a good teaching. Uh, if that person, in order to know that what that person is, whether that person is teaching, uh, a, a, um, whether that person is giving good teaching or not, uh, merely listening to what the, the to the words that is coming from the teacher is not uh, enough. The teacher should be uh, personifying, should be uh, apply, uh, um, the teacher should be applying uh, whatever he teaches to other people uh, in his own uh, in, in, in his own life as well. So if he tells everyone else to uh, if, if the teacher is telling, if there was a teacher who is telling everyone to, let's say, do uh, Lamrim or some, uh, let's say, Omani Padme Hum practice, but he himself is not doing any of that practice, then uh, either there is a very good reason why he is not no longer doing that, maybe because he passed the test or whatever, I mean, he passed that level, or, or uh, he's not a good teacher because a good teacher should... Uh, <clears throat> A good teacher should uh, um, follow or, or should, should practice what he teaches. Um, so, as we say, you know, walking the talk, walk the talk. So the, it's important the teacher is following the teaching. So if the teacher is following the teaching uh, properly, then we know that this is a good teacher. But in order, order to know that someone is a good teacher, we need to know that whatever he is teaching is actually good material. So therefore, teaching and teacher are kind of uh, um, related. <clears throat> uh, and, that, and another thing is that uh, uh, one, when looking for a teacher or, or looking for a teaching, one should not just be distracted by the outlook alone, meaning if the teacher is... Um, so I'm not trying to um, target any tradition here, but uh, any, any, any other faith or any other tradition here, but I'm just saying, as uh, as part of the teaching book, the book here, um, one should not look just for the outlook, the appearances. So the teacher may be sitting on a very high throne, but that doesn't mean uh, they are a great teacher. The teacher may have a very um, majestic looking hat. Uh, that doesn't mean the teacher has is a, that the person is a great teacher. Um, no matter what kind of clothes, uh, how um, elaborate, uh, el el elaborately close it. The teacher is it doesn't mean that is a great teacher. We all know from the uh, the Lord, um, uh, our great Lord, the Buddha Shakyamuni. So I mean, he was born a prince, but then he left the kingdom. He left the uh, palaces. He left the palace, and then <clears throat> he was walking barefoot. He has nothing other than his arms bow. And, uh, and 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 his robes that is all he has and he has no uh, his he, he doesn't sit on a high throne or he doesn't have any uh, uh, you know majestically looking hat or anything like any fancy hat or anything like that so I'm not saying someone with a hat is a bad person or is not a good teacher what I'm saying is in order to be a good person good teacher you don't you don't have to have a, a big hat or you don't have to be sitting on a big throne. Um, someone can be sitting on a big throne and also be a good teacher. So that is another matter. Uh, but uh, one should look. One should look for the content rather than the cover of the teaching. So that is the, the that is the most, most important part. So this is what it says. One should look for the uh, instructions that has been passed through the lineage masters or uh, realized masters and not just look upon the, not just be, be uh, stuck with appearances alone. So the next instruction, the sixth one is known as uh, relying on or depending upon, relying upon <clears throat> substances 
medicines and uh, mantras as well as uh, Tibetan origination that is beneficial for oneself and others. So what this means is that, uh, um, so substance here means uh, the blessing pills, uh, when we, like Mani Rilbu and uh, Medicine Buddha pill and so on and so forth. So we have a number of uh, holy pills. So that is the, um, so these are the, um, the, the substance is, this is what it means by the substance. And uh, medicine is, uh, so we, uh, tr traditional medicines, uh, homeopathic medicines are known as, it, it, it is to boost your, um, the immune system and the full, uh, so the, 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 the approach in homeopathic medicine and uh, allopathic medicine are totally different. So allopathic medicines are taken when you are sick, but homeopathic medicines are taken when you are not sick. So that uh, you, you take the homeopathic medicines, the traditional medicines, you take them so that you will not get sick. So, so it's what we are talking in that sense. So whether in India or in China or Tibet, uh, we, 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 take, we have the t traditional medicines, so which is taken in order for us not to get sick. <clears throat> Uh, so in that sense, uh, there are in, in Tibetan uh, culture, we have uh, some pills called Rinjenjilbu, means the precious pill. So there are different kinds of precious pills. Uh, so it, some of them are to elevate your heat. When you become your body becomes too cold, you, it, in order to elevate your heat, in order to, uh, in, in order to activate the fluid in your body and so on and so forth, there are different kinds of medicines that you take. You should be taking, even, even, even if you're not sick, um, so we believe that uh, <clears throat> the body, uh, when the when when the body is in all the, the the system of the body is in balance, then you are healthy. And when your uh, the, the the system the within the phys the system within your physical body is in imbalance, then you are you get sick. So this is what we believe in the traditional medicine. So. Therefore, we should take medicine. So there are different kinds of medicines. Uh, the medicines that you should take when you are when you get sick, and then there are medicines that you should take generally. Just it's more like a health supplement in today's uh, in in today's terms. It's similar to a health supplement. You take a health supplement not because you are sick, but uh, you take a health supplement so because you will not get sick. So it is it, it helps to boost your health. So a traditional medicine. Um, kind of sees it that sees it that way and there are uh, certain so when we say medicine we are talking about that that particular medicine and of course if you have a different kind of illnesses then of course you should take medicine to uh, help you from that and uh, <clears throat> then also you should rely upon mantras uh, to help yourself so I mean you have to do the you have to you, you have to study and you have to work hard yourself too but at the same time you can uh, these can come as supplement, uh, the medicines, the substances, as well as the mantras like Omara Pazanadi, which is the wisdom mantra. So uh, in, in addition to the hard work that you put in, in addition to the efforts that you put in, if you recite the mantra of uh, wisdom Buddha, then it will enhance your wisdom. Um, it will enhance your intelligence. Um, uh, but uh, without doing prop without putting in proper effort, if you just keep reciting the mantra alone, then it will not be of much benefit. Um, so, uh, substance, medicine, mantra, they should all combine together, and also it should be dependent. It it it, it should coincide with the dependent origination. So, dependent origination has uh, many different connotations. Here you can think of different. Uh, the, the, um, here you can think of dependent origination as uh, as a proper uh, um, opportunity. Uh, so a proper opportunity to practice a proper opportunity to uh, to practice and uh, the 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 medicine the uh, uh, the substance and the mantra when they are all uh, when they all coincide together then one will be uh, very successful in one's practice. <clears throat> so, oh, the, so we go one more. 
uh, the seventh one is that one should take food and uh, also steps. So one should take food that is appropriate with one's practices or one's livelihood and also um, any steps that you take, uh, any steps you should you take should uh, um, should be should should be beneficial towards uh, your health, um, especially in terms of the spiritual path that you are taking. So, for example, uh, so I will just say it very briefly that, uh, for example, if you are um, normally you take uh, you don't take too much food because if you take too much food then you become uh, lethargic, lazy, and then you become uh, 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 sleepy when you do your meditation and so on and so forth. So it's better not to take too much food, especially in the evening. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, foods with too much garlic will also make you drowsy and so on and so forth. So it depends on the situation. Um, and sometimes you have to do dream yoga and other practices and during which you have you need to sleep so in that sense you may have to take some uh, food that will make you sleepy and uh, also uh, like normally you don't take that much of rich food because that would make you uh, uh, grow um, uh, over get, get you overweight and uh, uh, but uh, sometimes during like Nyungne practices, you eat one meal a day and the next day is you don't take any meal. Uh, in such senses, in, in, in our culture, we usually take a very a rich and kind of heavy meal on the day we eat the meal because, you know, we, will, we won't be eating for the next 24 hours. So it depends on the practices that you are following and the steps that you are taking on that particular moment. So one should take food in accordance with the practices that you are following on that particular day or uh, that particular uh, moment. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so the teaching is uh, complete now. Uh, I think I stretched it by five minutes more. Uh, so one thing I need to tell you is uh, I think some people have missed the uh, timing. So it's always uh, 8.30 a.m. Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. Indian time. So uh, please check your schedule and uh, uh, you know convert the time to your time zone. Uh, so it's always always 8:30 a.m. Indian time. So I think some people have missed the teaching a little bit, and so therefore I need to. to I'm just reminding you, it is always 8:30 a.m. Indian time Sunday. Uh, so that said. Uh, uh, we um, so, so so the teaching is concluded here and if you have questions you can ask uh, if there are no questions there is one question in the messages uh, I will pick from that you can also send in the messages your questions so so as we wait for the uh, questions, I will uh, I will deal with one question. So there is one question from Charlene. Will you please explain deep interdependence? Thank you, Rambushe. So I will deal with this question first. And then if you have other questions, you can just prepare. <clears throat> so the question is, what is deep interdependence? Uh, so, so, excuse me. Uh, Yes, okay, you can, um, you can answer the, this question first, but uh, Adana friends uh, send me a message and... Uh, um, oh, okay, sure, 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 sure. Okay, ask now or you will answer the other's question first. Oh, okay, I so I ask the question. Okay, so, um, okay, so you, you collect the questions, so I will be very brief here. So deep dependent origination or uh, dependent arising. Um, for dependent, we know one depends on another. Uh, so that is what it means. So that everything is relative. Uh, so dependent origination, uh, especially deep dependent origination. So there are many different kinds of uh, deep dependent origination and uh, the subtle dependent origination and uh, coarser dependent origination. And so there are different kinds of dependent origination. So deep dependent origination is actually the uh the, the the secret you you might say the secret behind emptiness 
Uh, so once you understand emptiness, then you understand dependent origination. And once you understand the mechanism of dependent origination, then you understand emptiness. So without understanding each, uh, without understanding um, one, it is quite difficult to understand the other. Uh, in fact, in order to uh, get a complete picture of what interdependent, uh, uh, deep interdependent, uh, the dependent origination means, uh, interdependence means, uh, you need to have a proper understanding of emptiness. So in other, in other words, now to, uh, to, to, put, to, to, to put, to summarize, uh, dependent origination, deep, especially deep dependent origination means that no things uh, exist on its own. No things have an inherent existence. And uh, since things do not exist uh, inherently, since, since things do not exist on its own, it has to rely upon, it has to depend upon an, an observer uh, to validate that object's existence or that object's, <clears throat> uh, the, it, the, the object has to be validated by, by an observer. The subject has to be, um, the object has to be validated by an observer as what it is. Um, so, therefore, uh, it is important that uh, that all any phenomena, uh, any phenomena, to be to be to to be what it is, it has to be validated validated by a valid uh, reasoning or a valid um, observer. Uh, without any observer or any valid reason reasoning, that object ceases to be what it appears to be or what it is so if so so therefore an for an object to be uh, established as a, a certain phenomena it has to be validated by an observer and it goes uh, back and forth the observer also relies upon an object to be observed uh, to become a valid observer so um I think it's, let's put it there briefly, yeah. Uh, people says on questions from a Dana friend. Yes, yes, please. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, dear Impochela, uh, I have heard that um, you have taught us about the, you have taught about the three, three most important qualities of uh, a group. Uh, Hương ơi. Để chị giúp em câu này nhé. Để chị... <cười> chị đọc cái này cho cho thầy được không? À, câu nào chị? Câu này một à, bạn... Chị... Uh... Ừ, ừ, chị sẽ dịch sang tiếng Anh cho thầy nhé. Được không? Vâng, vâng. Chị dịch đi. Yeah. Oh, um, Rinpoche, so I just want to help uh, Hương out here. Um, so the question is that uh, you taught us about the three uh, qualities of a, a, um, a, a guru. Uh, of a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, so those three, uh, so ten, but they're the, the first most important three. Um, so the, her question is that she has met all the teachers who has these three qualities. Mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. can she pick which one is the right one for her? Oh, oh okay, very good question. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, okay, so, that, so, so, so you are very, very, very fortunate that you have found uh, teachers that has all the three qualities and uh, um, so, so if you have to pick um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not but if you if you have to pick one teacher I mean it doesn't mean like you have uh, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, abandon all the other teachers but if you want to pick one uh, from all the teachers that you have found then you should go, you should go for the teacher that moves you the most uh, so the teacher that whose uh, mannerism, whose teaching, uh, the way they the way they talk, the way they teach, the way they behave uh, uh, in 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 day to day life, everything. So the teacher that actually moves you and motivates you most uh, to uh, uh, to put in more effort into practicing dharma. So all the teachers are very good, but the one that motivates you most and uh, you feel closest to, that is the teacher that you should uh, take as your uh, root guru. 
but it doesn't mean you can uh, you know you, you take one teacher and abandon all the others because all different teachers have different uh, qualities and different uh, different qualities and different benefit benefits uh, to uh, they can offer to you so therefore uh, one doesn't necessarily have to abandon all the other teachers but if you have to pick one pick the one that motivates you most to uh, put in more effort into practicing the Dharma and to help sentient beings, of course. Uh, yeah, I think uh, let, 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 let her translate first and then you yes. can ask the question. Uh, Thank you, Rinpoche. Mm -hmm. uh, Rinpoche, I have a question here um, regarding also the uh, uh, guru-student uh, relationship. Um, Okay, so I have uh, a guru who uh, teach me to complete the Ngandro. Now I want to go on, but the problem is um, there is, that, you know, in, in your tradition and the other tradition, guru devotion is very important uh, to succeed it in your, um, you know, in your path. So, uh, so what do I do? Uh, I would like to, you know, learn more. No, you, you want uh, you to know, learn how more. How to avoid, you, you know, the, the how to deal with the guru devotion. Because oh, I okay. you want to over, learn a okay. di different thing too. Uh, okay, uh, so so if I get it correctly, uh, if I mm -hmm. if I understand it correctly, it like uh, your guru devotion somehow stops you from learning from other teachers. Is that what you're saying? Or what is the problem with uh, uh, the guru devotion? Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I'm just, you know, I, I haven't, you know, go deep into beyond the, the Ngondro at all. The, uh -huh. the problem is, uh, you know, it's like I almost complete the Guru, Devo uh, guru Yoga. Uh, so uh -huh. there is a Guru devotion part that um, I don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> uh, do because, you want to uh, elaborate? Yeah. Guru yeah, devotion in know, general I, is difficult for you? Okay. Yeah, I I just wanted to avoid the 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 issue of you know not having guru devotion in order to succeed it in my um, you know Buddhist path. Right, right. Or you know my path. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you want to avoid uh, making mistakes in guru devotion, or you want to override doing guru devotion? I I if I I didn't get it. Uh, making mistakes. How do I deal uh, with okay, you? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'll just be very brief because it's a, it's a vast subject. Because uh, guru devotion uh, is a vast subject. <clears throat> so now after picking, it's so that's why it's very important to pick a proper guru first, right? So we 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 are over that now. Uh, now you pick the right guru, you pick a proper guru. Now after picking the proper guru, uh, there are certain things that guru tells you to do. There are specific uh, instructions that the guru gives you. So you, it's important to follow uh, the specific instructions of the guru uh, that he has given you. Um, so there may be things that uh, the guru may have intended that you do this and that, but you did you you might you you might have missed open that and that is uh <clears throat> that is that is not a that is not that a big of an issue uh the most important thing is that the things that your guru tells you specifically to do this you should not miss so if you do that that is like uh that is contradicting that is uh, going against the wishes of the guru so if a guru tells you to do a certain um uh it gives you a certain instructions to follow then it's very important that you follow this uh for example your guru told you to uh, finish mondo so it's important to finish mondo first and then look for other things i mean you can look for other things but when you look for other things when you learn from other masters don't abandon your mondo practice you know because your guru the guru that you have chosen has told you to finish mondo uh, so finish mondo first and then uh, so don't abandon Wondo while looking for other gurus and other instructions. So that would be my brief uh, answer.
So uh, don't go against. Thank you. Yeah, th don't thank go you. Against um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Th thank Please. you, uh, Rinpoche. I know that I uh, I intended to finish Gondro. Mm -hmm. I almost finished mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So Very so good. there is a yeah. The 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 thing is um. So after Gondro, I wanted to do more. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened is. The guru want me to do another mantra round. <laughs> okay. And okay. Then I... <clears throat> so okay, very good, very good. Maybe uh, Huang Wen needs to uh, translate this first, or um. You can continue. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then I answer. So so I will tell you one story, and uh, so the story will. Uh, I hope the story helps for you with 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 your practice, with your dilemma that you're facing right now. Um, so I, 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 I believe, I, I'm, I mean, I hope that, uh, I guess that you recall the story of Milarepa. So Milarepa's teacher asked, I mean, ordered Milarepa to build uh, a house, a nine story house for his son, right? I, I don't know if you're familiar with the story or not. In, uh, in, in any I way, so Milarepa, uh, yeah, 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 I, I okay. know your answer. Right. <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah, good so... good 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 okay 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 <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Most, most welcome yes <laughs> okay thank you so i think we should uh, conclude here there's no more question right okay so then we conclude here yes <clears throat> So, can you do the Sashi Pergi, please? The, uh, the, um, the, the mandala offering, please. Yes. No, no, not that. The mandala. Yeah, that one, yeah. After that. Um, Are we going to do mix it now? Yeah, we can do mix it one time. Long life to thầy, chị. <cười>